All right guys, today we're here to review the Steiner CQT, which is the close quarters thermal. It is a very small compact unit that offers both red dot and thermal in one package. This is offered to us by Third Coast Thermal. This is not something that they gave us. We're not being paid for it. And we have to give it back after the review. They just wanted some honest truth about the unit. What we're going to do today is try to wrap everything up we've learned in the last four or five days about this unit. Um, I'm Joseph. I'm Adam. We're cousins. We've been hunting together for quite a while now. We dove into the thermal world probably four years ago. Yeah, about four years. So one of the things that's the whole proof of this thermal is the fact that in our experience, we're used to using the normal style thermal that everybody else has. It's a weapon mounted thermal that you're used to taking th anywhere from 100 to 300 yard shots with or whatever your comfortable range could be. This is primarily designed for what we would call building clearing or very tight quarters. Home defense uh, even would be a very good explanation for what this unit is designed for. However, me and this guy took it out and we stretched it out. I think the furthest shot that we had with it is a, um, I shot a coyote with it the first night I took it out and it was a 181 yards away. Um, that's not what this thing was designed to do, but we went out and did it. I shot him, shot the coyote actually twice. Later that night I shot a, a pig with it, um, 100 yards with my first shot. My second shot was about 130, 135 because it, it moved a little bit when I shot it again. Adam took it out. The other night, he got it here at the house. He looked at it. He looked through it at his cattle and some of the other stuff around his house for what, five minutes at max? I got to play with it for a very short time and then we took it out. And the best part about it is, is out here, we both have family land. Uh, I have a farm, he's got a farm. We both have cows uh, and we both row crop. So we know the importance of being able to protect that uh, and with the war on pigs, that's that's where it's at right now. War on hogs, for sure. Yeah, that's uh, kind of seems to be the hot deal nowadays. Which we've been we've been fighting these things for twenty years, long before it was popular, long before it was the, the big deal to do. Exactly. Um, we just happened to have a bunch of them. Yeah. What the first night we took it out with Adam is um we took it to a feedlot, got up on a pig about one hundred thirty yards away. Cows kind of messed it up for us. Wasn't able to connect with that one. Drove around for a little bit longer, found a, a pretty substantial group. And at this point, you know, it, thermal hunting is all about numbers. It's a numbers game. It's trying to kill as many as possible. But when you get the opportunity to take something out to test, it's one of those things where you kind of got to make the shots count. Uh, so I was able to take two hogs. The first hog I took was at about 30 yards. And the second one, uh, I think I, I think listening to the video, I hit him probably five times and we had this thing actually mounted on uh, kind of a upsized rifle for probably what it's actually designed for. It's on a 308. Uh, he zeroed it and I was able to bring it uh, to my own platform and utilize it in the same way that he would utilize it and I was able to connect with two hogs. What we're going to do is, like I mentioned a while ago, we're going to show you the video real quick. I'm behind him with another thermal. I'm videoing, I'm just there videoing what he's doing. You'll see him in the shot. I'll pan over to the pigs. You'll see about four or five pigs to the right. He shoots and we track a pig to the left. I think he's gonna take the one to the left. I'm focused on the one to the left and I hear him shoot and he connects with one to my right. I think you can explain to him what you were trying to do and what happened afterwards. And so basically what I was trying to do is, is obviously trying to take one of the closer ones just to make sure that I connected and was able to stay on target with the product. Uh, obviously, you can see my reticle and I hit exactly where I was aiming. I shot him right through the eyes. Uh, second one, I tracked to the left and then realized that I had left three to the right. Um, got back on one, the bigger of the three to the right. And again, put five shots on him solid. I think I missed once, Thank you. maybe twice out of the hole. And the missing in the video is not the, the optic, it's... No, it's, it's, it is what it is. And I mean, trying to shoot a running animal at 
anywhere starting from about 75 yards all the way out to 100 yards. It takes time to learn how to do stuff like that, and by no means are we experts at it. I think we just show them the videos. Yeah. And we can go after that. All right, guys, so you just saw me shooting and how bad it was, but it gave me the opportunity. I see every night. <laughs> <laughs> it gave me the opportunity to utilize this thing. I was able to take two hogs, the first one at 30 yards, the second one at over 100. Uh, if I had anything bad to say about it, it's because I had some washout from the suppressor um, because it's mounted so close to the bore. But that's what also helps your uh, accuracy, keeping it as close to the bore as possible. I probably bumped something in the settings to where it's what changed it to keep uh, the heat coming off the suppressor down. But even in that instant, a positive for it is, is that I was still able to track the second hog and put five solid shots on it and uh, five hits before I knocked it down. And a mess or two. And a mess or two. It is what it is. What I can say about it is the other night when I was shooting the pig and the cow that I was shooting, I actually know I had the suppressor mode on. I didn't notice the suppressor interfering with anything. Obviously, Adam took more shots than I did. Um, a lot more shots than I did. I like shooting. What can I say? <laughs> Who he, doesn't? He took more shots than I did, so he was able to heat the suppressor up more. This being a 308, the suppressor's going to get hot quick. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to cut to showing you the modes through the unit. Uh, we utilized a camera to mount to the back side of the unit to give you an idea of what you're actually looking at through the unit. So we'll go ahead and cut to those videos now. Uh, got it mounted up, looking at some cows in outline mode right now. Uh, these cows are between 30, um, 50, and out there is 320 to 400. And so I'll flip through the modes real quick. You have full mode. Gives you a pretty good picture. Even though those cows are way out. It gives you the opportunity to look and see. Just essentially these cows where the reticle is over are about 200. And the cows behind them here where the reticle is now 300. And these where the reticle is focused Coming up to them is 400. Coming back to the closer cows, this is 30 yards. Now I've dimmed the brightness down so that it doesn't blow out the scope. We'll move into the gradient mode. And this is one of those modes that we haven't been able to tell just a whole lot of difference other than the fact that maybe it gives the animal or whatever you're looking at a little brighter image to it. Uh, you can see the green tint coming in, and I can only imagine that that is something to do with atmospheric uh, changes that are making that color really come in. The gradient, you can see, gives a little more definition to these animals. Something like that outline mode would give you the opportunity during a low light or bright light situation to actually utilize the see-through portion of the scope to give you an idea and be able to actually identify the target uh, if it were a positive target versus a negative target. So in this instance, this gives you the opportunity to see the see-through portion of what I was talking about. You can identify a person here that actually has a flashlight on in this. You can actually utilize the see-through portion to identify the flashlight right here 
and what you can see on the ground. And even though it is total darkness around, you can actually identify a person. Now you bring that light onto you. And now even through, even through what you see here, you can actually identify that that is a person. And so going back through the modes again, and I'm sorry, it's a little shaky here, but going through the modes again, now we'll go back to uh, the next mode, which is full mode. Uh, obviously you can still see a little bit of light traveling or passing through the lens and then go into the gradient mode. And even in these two, uh, you can see actual light uh, coming through the see-through portion of the lens, but yet you can fully identify that this is a person versus an animal. Again, outline, full, and gradient. And right now, he's standing at approximately 40 yards. So that reticle will give you kind of a general understanding of uh, size and distance as well. You also have the opportunity to overlay a red dot. As you can see, it picks up nicely even over the top of the image, even though it's thermal. There's your outline version with the red dot and your full version with the red dot. Now notice the red dot and the reticle are not the same, uh, mainly because the red dot is generally used in close quarter combat versus your reticle, which will actually allow you to stretch out and shoot uh, further distances. So there are different reticle modes. You got X hair, X hair 3D. That just changes your reticle a little bit. And the out of focus is actually the, the recording device we're using. X hair 3D wide shows you a different reticle. You got 3D dot. And as Adam was saying earlier, the dot for the thermal reticle and the dot for the red dot are not going to line up perfect because one sided in for close range, one sided in for 100 yards, one's 25 yards. Then you have the red dot's 25 and the reticle is 100. Yes, I might have said that backwards. You got the X hair dot, X hair circle, bot dot, see, be a box dot, just a regular dot, and you can do none and only go off of the red dot and that's for if you're going to go into a building or something close quarter type scenario you want the thermal but you don't want the reticle the thermal reticle interfering with anything and then from there you have the suppressor mode on and off this is supposed to be when you have a suppressor and you're shooting and the suppressor gets hot i'll let adam talk about that in a minute because he had experience with that the other night you got your zooms your zoom one zoom two your three times zoom and you got a four times zoom. The picture is actually, it's actually pretty clear compared to some of the thermals that we've used on the zooms. Um, and you're not zooming in the actual cow, you're zooming in the thermal image, which is why it gets pixelated a little bit. You got brightness, which we covered that a little bit. Turn it up and down. You got the red dot, you can turn the red dot up and down. On the brightness, you can turn it all the way off or you can turn it up a little bit. When we went out shooting pigs and the coyotes, we actually turned the red dot all the way off because we were going to be taking longer shots. Then you have your dawn and dusk. This is your thermal modes. We're not going to go through that again. Zero and a line. This is an image position. Your image actually lines up on the cow or in this instance, it would be the cow. You can actually go into the zero and a line configure menu. And if you move... The image, you can have the, the thermal image of the cow off to the right, above, below, or to the left of the of the actual cow. Um, if you get the scope, you want to make sure that your image overlay is actually right on the object you're looking at. Because whenever I did the sight-in process, I got these backwards, and it took quite a bit longer to sight this thing in than it really needed to be. You want to select um, zero. 
and that actually the zero menu actually um, sites in your your thermal reticle. And then system info menu, we're not going to get into that, and then you're back to the reticle menu. All right, so we're going to kind of talk about uh, another small drawback to this thing, and basically it's going to be <clears throat> the two mounting screws that mount to your typical Picatinny rail. Okay, uh, <laughs> you have to use a tiny uh, Allen head to get in here. Can't use pretty much any of your standard Allens that you would utilize in um, like uh, your screwdriver heads or whatever, just for the simple fact that you're not gonna be able to get it under there. A little cumbersome doing that. I've already loosened it, so I'm gonna go ahead and take it off here. I'm six foot four, 250 pounds. I got pretty big hands, so you can tell this unit is not very big. You get two optics in one red dot, with thermal overlay or thermal background, however you want to call it, um, in a very bright daylight situation. There's a small smoke screen that you can flip up in front of the site that gives it a smoked out look to knock out any glare. It's got your standard, probably a standard red dot or close to it, uh, which is about two and a half MOA. So again, this is your close quarters combat thermal right here just for the simple fact that uh, your red dot is gonna be something that you're gonna focus on at your close-up ranges, and then it's gonna have a thermal reticle in there also for your longer shots. This thing is about five inches long, it's about three and a half inches wide, and it's about two and a half inches tall. That's my best guess. I didn't pull tape on this thing just to make sure of what the measurements are, but. As you can tell, this thing is a small compact unit, but weighs about 20 ounces, which is less than a pound and a half. What we're gonna focus on right now is this optic takes CR123 batteries, and you can tell them what you think about yeah. the 123 batteries. <laughs> it takes two of them, they're terrible, uh, but for this thing, they're surprisingly uh, extended range. Our experience with these and other optics you don't get probably what an hour to two hours max. Max. In this thing, the manual says eight hours. When I had when I got this given to me to test, the batteries were already in it. We had to change batteries after about six hours of utilizing the thermal. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably believe what the manual says that these batteries actually last eight hours on thermal mode. On the other mode, just red dot, you're supposed to get a thousand hours. A thousand hours. So this this is basically- We're not gonna test that. Yeah, we don't have enough time to test that. <laughs> so I think it's it's put together pretty well. Also- Pretty solid construction. It's built like a tank. And like Ed I mentioned earlier, it only weighs 20 ounces, which is not very heavy. I could actually put this thing right here in my pocket and I can zip the pocket up, which that is not your typical thermal. No but that just kind of gives you an idea how small it really is. So we hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, we hope you gained some knowledge about the new Steiner C2, CTQ. <laughs> C2Q. All right, so we hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you gained some knowledge over the new Steiner CT. <laughs> so we hope you enjoyed the video. We hope you gained some knowledge and some insight over the Steiner C-U-T. Uh, this fucking guy. So we hope you enjoyed the video today. Uh, hope you gained some insight over the new Steiner Close Quarters Thermal C-Q-T. And look forward to more for from Hickory. <laughs> Motherfucker, I was old. We hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Here we go. Well, we hope you enjoyed the video today. We hope you gained some knowledge and some insight over the new Steiner CQT Close Quarters Thermal. Look forward to more videos from Hickory Flat Bores.